Hi Nina, welcome to the Touch of Talent podcast. Today we're going to talk a little bit about you. If someone doesn't know you, who is Nina? Um, well, I'm a weightlifter. Um, I've been doing weightlifting for eight years now. Uh, mm -hmm. Before that, I was a gymnast. I did tumbling. Um, and other than that, I'm really sportive and I'm really fun, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm sweet. Um, yeah, I may look a bit angry sometimes and strong <laughs> and intimidating, but yeah. I'm okay as a girl. So yeah, that's yeah. who I am. Yeah, that's maybe a little bit of... Uh the reason why you look so tough is because of your sport. Can you explain maybe the differences um, that you have in your sport and maybe between powerlifting and Olympic weightlifting, what's the difference there? Yes, a lot of people think that I'm doing powerlifting because mm -hmm. powerlifting is really known nowadays. Um, but the biggest difference is that powerlifting consists of a squat, a deadlift and a bench press. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not what we're doing. I'm doing Olympic weightlifting and in Olympic weightlifting we're doing snatch and clean and jerk. Um, so we never do bench press in training because we don't really need upper body. Um, we do squats obviously we, because we need strong legs. We do yeah. deadlifts, kind of deadlifts. We call it pulls but it's like a d dynamic deadlift because we also need a strong back. So we kind of use the movements in our training, but it's a lot different in competition. Yeah, that's really interesting. And how, how did you become the Olympic weightlifter you are now? Like, how did you get into the sport? Um, and obviously, how are you this successful right now? Well, um, like I said before, I did tumbling as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the age of 13, I kind of, um, met weightlifting at a um, training camp of tumbling. Um, there was a coach there and we did some exercises and he saw that I was quite strong and talented for doing Olympic weightlifting. So um, he contacted the person that is now my coach and mm -hmm. that way I just kind of started doing weightlifting. Yeah, you um, kind of fell into it. Yes, exactly. Um, and the first year I combined the two, I still did uh, tumbling and I started doing weightlifting, but then at some point it was a bit too difficult to combine the two, so I needed to train more for weightlifting and my coach wanted me to train more for gymnastics, so it was a bit difficult. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of needed to choose um, and at that point I was 10th in the country uh, for gymnastics and I was already 4th uh, of Europe in weightlifting so it was kind yeah. of easy for me to, to decide and also yeah, yeah. Um, gymnastics is an Olympic sport but tumbling is not an Olympic sport and weightlifting is so that was kind of easy for me to, to decide yeah, yeah. so that's when I started um, and then it went slowly like I started to do some international competitions and then at the age of 14 I also did my first European championship under 15 um, yeah, there w I was fourth, like I said, um, and then, yeah, I just, it started to grow a bit. I also did competitions um, as a junior, and then I did world championships as well. Um, in 2018, I did my first world championship as a senior as well, even mm -hmm. though I was only 16 at that time. Oh. So, yeah, I was a bit, um, I was a bit, how to say it, like, before my age, yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I, it's it started to go really fast, and it was after some time that I realized that it did go really fast because at the time it was just like okay, go go yeah. go, and then after some time you're like, wow, you realize that yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's crazy what you did. Um, yeah. And then 2019, um, I was a um, junior European champion, and I also broke my first youth world record. Yeah. Um, so that was really special for Congrats. me. Thank you. <laughs> um, and that was also kind of, well, the Olympic qualification started at the end of 2018 for us. Yeah. Um, so that's because that's why I went to my first world championship because that was one of the qualification events. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously I was still really young there and my results were good for a 16 year old, but not good to go to the Olympics. So 
I, my coaches were like, yeah, we're going to try and start the qualification period, but I never thought that I would actually be able to yeah. go to the Olympics yeah. because our goal was to go to Paris 2024. So I was like, yeah, we'll see whatever, um, just do my competitions and enjoy the fact that I can be at a world championship, but the Olympics, yeah, we'll see yeah. about that. That's way farther. Really. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then obviously 2020 happened. <laughs> Um, yep. That was kind of sad because um, I was nowhere near qualifying for the Olympics, but mm -hmm. at training I was doing really good numbers. So I knew that I would be able to qualify if I had some competitions. So I really yep. needed some qualification events, but they were all cancelled. So that was a big problem for me, but luckily they... Um, delayed the Olympics for a year. Yeah. And because of that, I had two more qualification events in 2021. I had European seniors and I had junior world championships. Yeah. Um, at European seniors, I was third and at the junior world championships, I won. And um, because of that, um, I was qualified for the Olympics. Yeah. Did you need to win or just yes. three? Oh, no. you needed to yes. win? Yes, I, I, my last lift, I needed my last lift to be able to qualify. So I was really happy with that. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't tell everybody that I was qualified because it was not official yet. So I was really happy, but I couldn't <laughs> say anything. So I was like, oh, yeah. I want to tell everybody, but I yeah. can't because it's not official yet. And then like a few weeks before the Olympics, I could finally tell, so I was, I was really happy. But it was really, um, yeah, chaotic, I would say, mm -hmm. 2021, because obviously we didn't have competition for a really long time. And then all of, all of a sudden I had the qualification events. And then because I was selected so last minute, I needed to go directly into training again for the Olympics for the because Olympics. we were already June at the time and my competition was like, the 24th of July, I think. Oof. So it was really close. So I needed to go on a training camp and train a little hard. I also needed to lose body weight. So it was like yeah, yeah, really yeah. chaotic at that time. Mm -hmm. But I was really happy that I could go to the Olympics and I was really proud of myself. But obviously after the competition, I was really happy that I had a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's obviously very nice if you have a break after such a long period of hard work. Yeah. And how did you take on 2020? So if COVID hits, then what do you do? Everything is canceled. And how do you kind of get through that mentally? Well, for us, it was really weird because in March, I was supposed to have the Junior World Championships. And in April, I was supposed to have the European Senior Championships, but mm -hmm. they were both, well, they were not canceled, but they were delayed mm -hmm. until June. So we just kept training because we needed to do the competitions in June. And then in June, they said, oh, we're going to delay them again until yeah, yeah. September and then Every in September time. again and then delay it again, again, again. So that was really hard. Just like be motivated to train hard and go to the competition. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, you can't go. It's like two months yeah. later. And then you need to find the motivation again to train hard again. And it happened again and again and again. And that was really hard. But obviously, I was still motivated because I really wanted to go to the Olympics because I know I knew there was a little chance for me to go. Yeah. So yeah, but it was hard, especially in the beginning because I could not train in, well, first they told me I couldn't train, so I needed to train at home. Um, so we like made sure I had a bar and some weights at home, but obviously I can't do a lot at no. home because if I like let it fall on the ground, everything is broken, <laughs> so I can't do that. <laughs> so then we made sure that um, I could train again, um, because at first they told us that only the people who are selected for the Olympics could train in the yeah. facility, mm -hmm. and then I was not allowed, and then my coach was like, no, she needs, because she's still trying yeah. to qualify, and if you're not letting her train, she's not going to qualify, no. so yeah, then I could train, but all alone, no athletes, yeah. no coaches. So I was like, ah. Yeah. That, was that but, really hard training alone? Yeah. Because I had the same. I was the only one who was in the Olympic, like uh, in the document, but I was like fifth or fourth reserve. So yeah. I wouldn't go to the Olympics, but I was still able to train because I was on that list. Yeah. But I was all alone. Of course, the, the females from gymnastics were also yeah. there. But yeah. for me, that was really weird to not train with my teammates um, yeah and I can guess it's, uh, 
it yeah, was really I'm, weird also. Like from time to time, I'm used to training alone because in Belgium, obviously, there are not a lot of people who do weightlifting, especially yeah. not at my level. But I'm not used to training alone for weeks and weeks and weeks, and that was really hard for me. Yeah, um, I can imagine. Yeah, and luckily after some time, uh, my coaches were allowed to come. They were like oh, one at a time. Coach? Yeah, without coach. Oh, I, yeah, there, damn. yeah, it was no coach. It was just me in the room. So um, then after some weeks, they they were allowed to come. So mm -hmm. that was me and the coach. Nice. That was at least it was something. And then after some time, um, one athlete was allowed to come, and then it it kind of started to make sense again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> at the start, it was kind of hard. But I'm glad that that is over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and now obviously it's not far until Paris. Yeah. Um, how do you look upon it? Uh, and is the competition even harder now because? Or, or maybe mentally also that you feel like there is more pressure because you you are going for your second Olympics and not the first and now it's more like oh I need to go again or is it quite the same well it's a bit an odd situation last time when I was qualified it was like oh yeah next time it will be easy to qualify mm -hmm. and then I just focus on the competition but after the last Olympics, they decided, well, the IOC decided to remove um, some weight classes mm -hmm. from the Olympics. Yeah. So the weight class that I'm normally competing at, the 55 category, is not Olympic anymore. So I had to choose either the lower one or the higher one. The lower one is the 49, the cool. higher one is a 59. Yeah, so 49 is really low. Mm -hmm. um, that's the one I also competed at at the Olympics, but I did that one time and I was like, I'm going to do this one time, but never again because yeah. it's horrible. Mm -hmm. um, but then we were like, yeah, what should we do? Go down or go up? Um, and then we decided we we're going to go down one time. So that's what I did last December for World Championships. I mm -hmm. went to the 49 again and now we're going to the 59. So we're going up next month. I have 10 Olympians. kilos. Yeah, that's the first time I'm going to the 59. Um, and I guess at the end we'll see, mm -hmm. but it's only the top 10 and the Olympic qualification that can go to the Olympics. So I need to be in the top 10, yeah. which is really hard. So I guess we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I and have no the, idea. The, the 59 was already there? Yes, or not? Yes, yeah. yes. So it's not like they bumped everything up or something? No, no. The thing is that um, in Rio 2016, yeah. we had 10 weight classes and then in Tokyo we only had seven and now in Paris we only have five. So the weight classes are still there, but yeah, they yeah. just said this and this and this is not Olympic anymore. Yeah. So you can still compete at it in the worlds and like European championships, but not oh, yeah. at the Olympics. Okay. So in order to be able to qualify, you need to compete in the Olympic in that ones. Category. Yeah. So that makes it a lot harder. Yeah. So and top ten. Yes. Okay. That's tough. That's <laughs> yeah. tough. That's really tough. Okay. Um, do you want to say to the people who are watching or listening? Anything else about Nina? About me? Yeah. Um, maybe not especially about me, but maybe about my sport. Oh, yeah. Um, of a lot of people think that weightlifting is all about the big, strong man um, who lift a lot of weight. Yeah. And I guess I, during the last couple of years, I tried to change that mindset a bit um, because I tried to show that I, as a small girl, I would say. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm also able to lift a lot of weight and it's not, you don't necessarily need to be a big strong man in order to be able to lift weights and in order to, mm. in order to be able to do weightlifting as a sport. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of small girls who are starting weightlifting now and I'm really happy to see that. So I would kind of like to say that don't be afraid to start doing weightlifting and don't think that you're going to be looking really masculine. <laughs> if you start doing weightlifting, it's a really good sport and it's really good for you. Also, if you're doing other sports, um, it can course, be yeah. a good addition to your training. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to say. So it's really beautiful. Do you think that already because of your effort to bring it to the general public, uh, did it already work? So do you have really girls who come up to you or maybe message you like oh thank you or 
is it not that obvious but you see like in the clubs maybe more well, people who come the the both actually happen there oh. are girls who come to me and say yeah i started doing everything because of you there are also some of those girls who are training with us right now so that's really nice to see mm -hmm. but i just see in general that a lot of girls and a lot of like boys as well are starting to do competitions and starting to do weightlifting and yeah. it's really nice to see um, and also in other sports as well it, a few years ago it was really odd for other sports to be do, to do be doing wow to be doing <laughs> weightlifting or like strength yeah, um, training as an sessions extra yes to, to yes build exactly sport, but yeah. now it's really common so I really like that because it's yeah. really good um, to build some muscle and to have yeah, obviously. A, yeah so that's really good for your sport as well so I'm really happy to see that perfect um, one last question why do you maybe chose the agency for your management well um, I guess that's a pretty easy thing to answer um, I well there are Nowadays, there are not really a lot of agencies for um, sport athletes, mm -hmm. especially for athletes that are in an individual sport like I am. Yeah. There are a lot of them for like big sports like soccer or maybe cycling, yeah. but not for sports like me. And I really like the way they work. Um, it's really personal and they really wish you the best and I think that's really important for an athlete to have a good environment um, also um, Financially and for like um, yeah. Sponsorships and other people like that. So I'm really happy that I found them and that we can work together Thank you. Yeah <laughs>